there are three main ways that heat can be transferred. The first way is called conduction. The second way is called convection. And the third way is called radiation. So let's look at conduction first of all. So conduction means the transfer of heat through a solid. And we're going to find out how conduction works. Now an experiment we all did, a really simple experiment, used a beaker, which was placed on a tripod, and boiling water was poured into the beaker about halfway. We then put three rods made of different materials into the beaker. So one of them was iron, one was glass, and one was wood. And if you touch the rods to feel how quickly they get warm, you find out that iron is the most conductive to heat, which means the heat passes through the iron much faster than the glass or the wood. So iron is a good conductor, whereas glass and wood are poor conductors or good insulators. And if we look at the structure of iron, if we zoomed in, you'd find that the bar of iron is made actually from iron atoms, which are very close together. And what happens is, as you heat up one part of the iron, for example by putting it in a fire or hot water, it gets more energy to move. The heat provides energy to make the, the particles vibrate. So this particle is vibrating now, but it can't move very far because it's a solid, and in solids the particles are, st are still close together. So as it vibrates, it knocks into the next particle in the iron, which causes the next atom of iron to vibrate too, sharing some of the energy. And as these two particles vibrate, they knock into the next particle of iron, or atom of iron, which vibrates. And eventually, the heat provided to the first iron atom is shared out between all the iron atoms, and the vibration passes along the iron. And this is called conduction. So why can't conduction happen in air? Well, in air, the particles are much further apart from each other. So if you heat one particle and make it vibrate, it won't actually be bumping into the next particles over here, or here. Which means that even though you're heating one particle up, it can't conduct, or the heat can't conduct through the air because the particles are too far away from each other. So conduction only happens in a solid. So let's now look at convection. Now, if you take a solid and you heat it, as we said earlier, the particles vibrate. Now what happens is the particles vibrate, and because of that, they actually end up getting a bit further apart. Now they're still a solid, but because the solid is now expanded, it means that the solid now takes up more space. So we say that it's less dense. Density means how closely packed the particles are. So in this case, the particles in this solid have been heated, so they separate slightly, and now it is less dense. So we did an experiment to find out how convection happens in terms of density. And in this experiment, what we did was we took a beaker, which we put onto a tripod, and we set up a Bunsen burner. So we then filled the beaker with some cold water halfway up, and we dropped in a purple potassium permanganate crystal. So what happened was this crystal started to dissolve and at this point, we put the Bunsen burner on, on a blue flame. So what we saw was the purple colour from the permanganate crystal dissolved and started to move upwards like this in the beaker. But as the purple reached the top, it then started to move and sink again. And of course, when it got heated, it then moved and went up again. 
and you see this kind of spiral effect. So why do we get this circular motion of the die going up and down, up and down, up and down? Let's find out. So we said earlier that if you heat solids or liquids, then the particles expand, and therefore they're further away from each other, they take up more space and they become less dense. Now less dense things tend to float or go upwards. So hot air rises because hot air is less dense than cold air. It takes up less, so it takes up more space and therefore rises. So as you heat the liquid, the bottom part of this beaker over here is actually warm. It becomes less dense and the water becomes less dense and starts to rise. But as it rises, it gets further away from the Bunsen burner. It cools down and therefore it becomes more dense, it takes up less space, and it starts to sink. And this is called a convection current. And convection has to happen in things that can move freely. Because if it's in a solid, those particles can't move to form that movement going up and down. So convection only happens in liquids and in gases, but convection does not happen in solids. Now the last type of heat transfer we're going to learn is radiation. Now radiation is quite easy. It's actually caused by light being transferred. And it's actually a special kind of light. It's a light called infrared. So infrared light is actually light that we can't see with our eyes. It's invisible light. So if you use a TV remote control to turn your TV on and off, it's actually releasing infrared light that you can't see with your eye. And infrared light is actually warm light. So some of you might have an electric cooker at home. So your electric cooker will actually release infrared light, which will make your food hot. Now we know that if you're wearing clothes in the summer, black clothes, for example, a black t-shirt, actually becomes much, much warmer than white clothes. And this is because the sun releases infrared light and black clothes absorb this infrared radiation, making the clothes become warm, whereas white clothes reflect the infrared radiation, keeping you cooler. This is also why, in hot countries, houses are painted white, because the white reflects the heat, keeping the houses nice and cold. Whereas if you painted your houses black, it would absorb more heat. Now the interesting thing about radiation is that radiation can travel through a vacuum. And a vacuum is something that has no air or particles. So that's why the Earth is heated by the sun, because the sun releases infrared radiation, which travels all the way through space and reaches our planet. Now if that heat could only travel through convection, it couldn't reach the Earth, could it? Because there are no particles in space. There's no air in space. So this type of heat transfer is called radiation. And radiation can travel through a vacuum or through air or even through some liquids. So that is the summary of the three types of heat transfer.